Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to St. Anthony's. Today we celebrate the second Sunday of Advent. Today's Mass is offered for the repose of the souls of Meryl and Maxine Schleich. A note about our procedure at Mass today. At communion time, we ask that you please remain kneeling or sitting in your places. Father will come to each of you at your pews to distribute communion. For those of you in the balcony and the funeral alcove, you can also stay in your places and communion will be brought to you as well. Please stand. Lift up your hands, ye mighty gates, behold the King of glory waits. The King of kings is drawing near, the Savior of the world is here. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the Lord be with you. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. I am not forgetting the Gloria. There's no Gloria during Advent. <laughs> Almighty and merciful God, may no earthly undertaking hinder those who set out in haste to meet your Son, but may our learning of heavenly wisdom gain us admittance to his company, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Comfort. Give comfort to my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and proclaim to her that her service is at an end. Her guilt is expiated. Indeed, she has received from the hand of the Lord double for all her sins. A voice cries out, in the desert, prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the wasteland a highway for our God. Every valley shall be filled in. Every mountain and hill shall be made low. The rugged land shall be made a plain. The rough country a broad valley. Then the glory of the Lord shall be revealed. And all the people shall see it together. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. Go up onto a high mountain, Zion, herald of glad tidings. Cry out at the top of your voice, Jerusalem, herald of good news. Fear not to cry out and say to the cities of Judah, here is your God. Here comes with power the Lord God, who rules by his strong arm. Here is his reward with him his recompense before him. 
Like a shepherd, he feeds his flock. In his arms, he gathers the lambs, carrying them in his bosom and leading the ewes with care. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our response, Lord, let us see your kindness and grant us your salvation. Lord, let us see your kindness and grant us your salvation. I will, I will hear what God proclaims. The Lord, for he proclaims peace to his people. Near indeed is his salvation to those who fear him. Glory dwelling in our land. Lord, let us see your kindness and grant us your salvation. Kindness and truth shall meet. Justice and peace shall kiss. Truth shall spring out from the earth, and justice shall look down from heaven. The Lord himself will give his benefits. Our land shall yield its increase. Justice shall walk before him and prepare the way of his steps. A reading from the second letter of St. Peter. Do not ignore this one fact, beloved, that with the Lord one day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years like one day. The Lord does not delay his promise as some regard delay, but he is patient with you not wishing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. But the day of the Lord will come like a thief, and then the heavens will pass away with a mighty roar, and the elements will be dissolved by fire, and the earth and everything done on it will be found out. Since everything is to be dissolved in this way, what sort of persons ought you to be? Conducting yourselves in holiness and devotion, waiting for the hastening, waiting for and hastening the coming of the day of God. Because of which the heavens will be dissolved in flames and the elements melted by fire. But accordance to his promise, we await new heavens and a new earth in which righteousness dwells. Therefore, beloved, since you await these things, be eager to be found without spot or blemish before him at peace. The word of the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Prepare the way of the Lord, make straight his paths. All flesh shall see the salvation of God. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. The beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. As it is written in Isaiah the prophet, Behold, I am sending my messengers ahead of you. He will prepare your way. A voice of one crying out in the desert, Prepare the way of the Lord, make straight his paths. John the Baptist appeared in the desert, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. People of the whole Judean countryside and all the inhabitants of Jerusalem were going out to him and were being baptized by him in the Jordan River as they acknowledged their sins. John was clothed in camel's hair, 
with a leather belt around his waist. He fed on locusts and wild honey. And this is what he proclaimed. One mightier than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop and loosen the thongs of his sandals. I have baptized you with water. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. The Gospel of the Lord. I hope you all had uh, productive and happy Thanksgiving celebrations. As I begin my homily this morning, I want to share a quote a friend of mine gave me the other day, and it's going to fit in with what we're doing right now on this second Sunday of Advent. And since this person is probably in cyberspace, I just want to make sure I I don't forget, because it's a good one. And it goes like this. God stands in the way of the proud because pride stands in the way of him. Okay? God stands in the way of the proud because pride stands in the way of him. Okay. Thank you for that quote, by the way. And here's why it fits so beautifully with our scriptures. Because on this second Sunday of Advent, which of course is a preparation not only for Christmas but for our Lord's second coming, And what do we mean by that? None of us are going to see the second coming, right? Does everyone here know that? The end of the world is far, far, far away. There will be a time when they look back at the year 2000, when it's the year 30,000, and they'll think, wow, they were really close to Jesus. They were only 2,000 years away. Kind of like we think about the people who lived in the third century. Well, they were only 200 years after Jesus. In fact, the second reading helps us to understand that a little bit, doesn't it, where it says uh, in the second letter of St. Peter, the passage we just heard that says, now, none of you do not uh, be uncognizant of this fact, that a year for the Lord is like a thousand, a day for the Lord is like a thousand years, and a thousand years is like a day. Try to get away with that in your math class and see what happens. I tried it. It, The teacher wouldn't believe me. I didn't pass that test. I said, it's new math. It's Jesus math. No, that doesn't work. But what about pride? What is it about pride? I bring it up because I'm going to tell you something that I missed doing on Wednesday with our parents, especially of our second graders, whose students are preparing for their first reconciliation. And I get to have two meetings with the parents. And many of you have been in those meetings, and you know how I begin my talk. Very simply saying, I am here to say something to hopefully trigger in your own life that you go to confession before our next meeting. Now, sometimes people get back to me and they tell me, Father, you succeeded. Uh, It's nice to know that. But it's hard. I get that. It's not easy going to confession. I get that because I go. And what surprises me is that as regularly that I go, it doesn't, for some reason, get that much easier. And maybe it's because of that pride thing. Going to confession is a very humbling thing. It's not easy. Well, you know what? For some people it is. In fact, and I ask people, like, oh, yeah, Father, I don't know what you're sweating about. Maybe it's because it's how we grew up. I don't know. But I think that's got something to do with why I have such a great feeling afterwards. Because it is something serious. It is something that, um, you know, it's not just like tying your shoes. Well, except for you young guys, that might be a little challenge there. But what about it? Why is it so hard? Our scriptures today, what are they doing? Each one of these readings draws our attention to the reality of God's love for us, of him becoming one of us, so that we might have the expiation of our sins. That word came up in the first reading, right? It said uh, that your guilt may be expiated. What is expiation? Let me give you an idea of something I love on the 5 o'clock Saturday evening Mass. An hour before that Mass, I'm in the confessional. And then I go right from the confessional to the altar. 
And what takes place? All the sins that we confess and give to the Lord are expiated. They're wiped out. How does that happen? It happened in the crucifixion of our Lord on the cross and His resurrection, the conquering of of our sins. And so when I'm at that altar, it makes it worthwhile. It makes all the sacrifices that I make as a priest meaningful and worthwhile. In fact, I can remember when I first lived uh, in Enderlin, I was at uh, St. Patrick's as a pastor for three years, and I had two uh, mission parishes as well. And I was always amazed at how no one showed up for confession on Saturday afternoons, or very, very infrequently. And then what really surprised me was my first experience when people came to confession who weren't Catholic. That really blew me away. Uh, In fact, I'll never forget asking this one penitent, because he came like every month or so, and I knew he lived in town, but I never saw him in Mass on Sunday. And so I kept waiting for him to say something like, oh yeah, and I missed Mass this last Sunday. But that, he never confessed that. So I was just kind of wondering, and then I asked him, I says, now where do you, where do you worship on Sunday? Because then I thought, you know, he probably goes to Lisbon because uh, he might have family there. You know, some people go to different parishes and so forth. And so I asked out of curiosity, and he goes, oh, I go next door to First Lutheran or Trinity Lutheran, whatever one it was. And I kid you not, I, my jaw just dropped. I didn't know what to say. I was amazed. I said, hold it. You're not even Catholic, and you're coming here to the confessional to go to confession? And he could, I'm sure, pretty sure he could tell my surprise. And he said right away to me, well, Father Cartwright, um, you're our priest. You, are, you belong to the church. Our pastor is just like one of us. You know, we hire and fire those guys. They come and go. They're married and have kids. They're like the rest of us. You're not. You're set aside for everyone. So, of course, I was very edified to hear this, especially from a non-Catholic. I'm like, wow. And he gets the whole thing about the seal of the sacrament and really likes that. And I do too. Who would go to confession if you told your sins to somebody and they'd be on, uh, your, on their Facebook account telling your sins to the whole world or, you know, whatever? No one would go, of course. Because it is something about our relationship with the Lord. And that's one of the things that uh, is so awesome about the sacrament is that we not only read about it in the scriptures, as Catholics, we get to live it. And it is a great source of evangelization. It is a great source of helping us live our lives, as these readings are calling us, to make straight the paths, to stop and look back at our lives and say, what am I doing? How am I living my life? Can I be doing better? Am I happy? Because if I'm not, something's not, not right. Am I at peace in my own heart? Am I in love with the Lord? Or do I allow my pride to kind of block that? You know, is there something I'm hanging on to? In fact, I was very surprised uh, at one of our meetings with uh, our parents uh, who are, whose children are preparing to go to confession. And I learned something, and I was very edified because there were a couple of parents who were very open about, because I love asking questions, like, okay, I know every time there's a meeting, there'll be those who've gone to confession the last week, there'll be those who go monthly, there'll be those who go, you know, once or twice a year, there'll be those who go every Lent, there'll be those who haven't gone since they got married, there'll be those who haven't gone since they uh, made their first reconciliation, and there'll be those who've never gone ever. And that's with 12 people. It just always amazes me. It's not like two groups. It's always this. And we're all at different places in our spiritual life. And and there are times where we need the sacrament more, especially when we're younger, than at other times. Especially times, too, when certain crises are happening in our life and we need that extra grace. But I was so enamored by this, this wonderful question that came up from the experience of one of our parents who said, well, you know, why would someone go to confession unless they intend to make a change in their life? You know, if you're just going to keep doing the same thing, why even go? Here's why. is because that you recognize that maybe you are powerless when it comes to a certain sin. Maybe you recognize that, you know, even in my heart, I love this sin, I'm not really going to change, but... 
just by the fact that you know that something's not quite right. That's all you need. And entrust it to the Lord. And your prayer could just be simply, simply something like, Lord, at least give me the desire to want to change. At least give me the desire to want to change. A lot of times, that is the first step that changes everything. So, um, don't be afraid. Um, and as we look at our scriptures here, let me just pull a couple things out that I th thought were so beautiful. Of course, this image, you know how much I love this gospel passage. That is the first pre-Christians going to confession, right? They get, uh, Mark gives a description of St. John the Baptist. He's doing this baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins, okay? It's not the baptism that we receive Okay? The baptism we receive is the one he talks about here. He says, I baptize you with water, the one coming, the Messiah. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. And that's the baptism that we receive, most of us as infants, some of us as adults. But this baptism is what we call the sacrament of penance. In fact, in this translation, this is what uh, the, uh, uh, St. Mark writes, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins, and then he describes, and they went down into the waters. They were being baptized by him in the Jordan River as they acknowledged their sins. And you know what that means, acknowledged, right? They spoke them out loud. Now, I'm sure they probably whispered them very quietly as they got near the Baptist. And he probably wasn't saying stuff, I couldn't hear you, I could just speak up a little louder. I'm sure he was probably, you know, just, no, you're, you're fine. It still happens in the confessional today. Even sometimes when someone's on the other side of the screen, you know, they're just kind of whispering. And, and that's our human nature. That's, you know, we're not proud. We're, again, it's a humbling thing. It's, it's, it, it takes away our pride for a few moments. And what does it do? Every time we go to confession, it's always a win for Jesus. It changes each of us little by little. And I don't care if it's your first confession or your 12,000 and first confession. It's always a win for Jesus. And I think we always learn something. And sometimes as we learn more and more about ourselves, our Lord reveals us to ourselves in a way that we can accept it, the way we can understand it, the way that we can handle it, so that we're never crushed, that we never go to confession and feel like, I am such a loser, my life is worthless. It's always just the opposite, isn't it? It's always a source of hope. I love that feeling of starting new. It's just like, ah, oh, it's a new day. It's all new now. It all starts from scratch, and I get another chance to try better. And I recognize on my own, I am not going to do better, but only with Jesus' help. And just even as we do in our examination of conscience of asking that question, well, what do I need to change in my life? Four years ago, just so you know, uh, I was very edified by all the people who came to confession after the election, uh, who came to the realization that the person that they voted for, or persons, or party, dedicated their lives and energy and money of our money to the destruction of innocent human life. And some people came to the realization, I have done something gravely evil. Yes, you have. And it's great to bring it to confession. Get rid of it. Start anew. It's not the end. God is infinitely patient. He has all the patience that we can't even think of. He's always forgiving. He's always reaching out to us. He's always wanting better for us. He wants us to change this world, to stop building a kingdom of death and destruction, but to build a kingdom of life and love and peace and joy, a kingdom of hope that's not despair, that's tearing down the very fabric of society, innocent human life. I'm not talking about killing a couple criminals. I'm not talking about capital punishment, which again, how often do people get killed in this country, in this state? Oh yeah, never. I love how people tell me, well, that's, that's the issue, Father. It's like, really? I was just at the abortion clinic on Wednesday. 22 babies died. How many died here? 
from capital punishment? Oh, no one. Don't buy the smoke screens, please. Whatever our sins are. The other thing, too, is I notice as a confessor is that we shouldn't give our sins power. Our sins are never what are important. What's important is rekindling that relationship with our Lord, of recognizing the cost of the crucifixion of our Lord, why He did it, why it is so gross, why it is so hard to look at. You know, a lot of people think that Catholics are nuts because we placard Jesus on a crucifix in our churches and homes and places of work. Because it is gross, it is hard to look at, but it reminds us of the cost. And Jesus gave everything for us, and that's how much He loves us, and He wants the best for us, and He's always giving us the grace to change. So, again, even as Catholics, what a treasure we have that we can go to confession as often as we want. And I love when people go two, three times a week. Good for you. You know, you get that sanctifying grace to help you keep growing and changing, letting our Lord be open to His grace to mold us and change us. Finally, I just want to close with a few words from the uh, second reading as well uh, this morning from the letter of St. Peter. He says, you know, um, God is patient with you, and he's never wishing that anyone should perish, but should come to repentance. God never wishes that we should die without being in his embrace, but that we should come to repentance. And not only do we do that every night when we go to bed and we say our act of contrition and we think back on the day, what we might do better the next day, or maybe things that we've said that we regret, Yeah, I know, you guys think I don't ever say things I regret, I do. Okay, maybe not every single day, but I know a lot of people pray for me because so many good things happen in my life. Thank you. And thank you, everyone who does go to confession. It makes the sacrifices I make as a priest worthwhile. Living a life of celibacy is not an easy thing. Um... And especially as you get older and your friends and family have grandkids and it becomes even more stark in your life, like what you've given up. But it's awesome because people take advantage of it because they go to confession, because they come to receive the Eucharist. It makes it all worthwhile. So he goes, conduct yourselves then in holiness and devotion. And what does that mean, devotion? Waiting eagerly for the Lord's coming. Can I give you an example of waiting eagerly for the Lord's coming? When my buddy Monsignor Wald was in the hospital dying, do you guys remember Monsignor Wald? Anybody who was at, went to school at Holy Spirit, for example, he was our pastor here for 12 years in town a few years ago. Monsignor and I were, were ordained together, and um, he had a funny sense of humor. And uh, when he was in the hospital on Tuesday before he died, he was in the hospital in Jamestown. And one of his friends had called and said, you know, uh, Monsignor Wald, I think you should go to the hospital in Fargo. I think you'd be safer there. You know, I think they're going to kill you in Jamestown. And what was his response? I should be so lucky. I hope I do. He had his bags packed. He looked eagerly to be with the Lord. And as hard as it is that he died, I am so happy. And it's just one more person who I look forward to finding out the rest of the story when we get to heaven. Because he was kind of a curmudgeon, and he just had a, he had the most incredible heart and uh, this kind of rough exterior that I can't wait to find out what all was in his lifetime and, and things that God used to form him to be a great priest. Conduct yourselves in holiness and devotion, waiting and hastening for the coming of God. And I want to thank so many of you, too, who are here who live good and holy lives that are so impressive. And I think sometimes you don't even realize yourself and all that you do. Even just that desire. Being here this morning, I know a lot of people are in fear. They're thinking, you know, I could get this disease. It could be the end of me. It could be. 56 years old, Monsignor Wall didn't have any huge deficits physically that I knew about, medically. Who'd have thunk? No one. 
And so let us ask for that grace, looking forward for the hastening of the coming of the day of God. And then he gives us this beautiful thing to ponder about the promise that God has made that we await, what, a new heavens and a new earth in which righteousness dwells. A new heaven and a new earth in which life is perfected. And we, we will be without sin. We will not have temptations. We will live and be as God intends us to be. So let us ask our Lord for that grace to look forward to that. And again, I invite you to come to our parish penance service. Um, it's on Monday, not tomorrow, the following week. I think that's the 14th of December. It'll be at 7 p.m. As usual, we'll have close to a dozen other priests here. Because I know people say to me, well, Father, I don't want you to know my sins because then you'll think less of me. Well, just the opposite is true. I usually think more of people when they go because I know it's hard to go. But you have your choice of all kinds of other priests too. So please come, take advantage of it, bring your friends and family. If nothing else, come and let people know you want. Can I tell you something that moves people sometimes too? They'll be like, oh my gosh, if grandma and grandpa went to confession and like they don't do anything wrong, yeah, tell them you went. Because they're like, well, did I better go? Because I know I'm, you know, I'm not doing, as, I'm not as holy as grandma and grandpa yet, so I better go. Tell people. And if it's a good experience, share it. If it's a bad experience, let me know. If I'm the cause of the bad experience, let the bishop know. Because it should be nothing but pure uh, grace, deep peace, joy, all the things that our Lord desires for us. And, and not joy in the sense like, <laughs> I love doing this, because I get it. It's not easy to go. It's hard to go to confession. But afterwards, I just love that feeling. Every time I go, I just feel like our Lord is just embracing me and tightening his arms around me and hugging me, saying, Raymond, you are so wonderful. I love you so much. I would do anything for you. I die for you every day. I want you to be closer, happier, and filled with greater peace. Praise be Jesus Christ, now and forever. Amen. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages. Come from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Confident in the Father's love and mercy and compassion, let us now bring our prayers and petitions before him. For all members of the church, may God work in us for greater conversion of mind and heart in order to be better instruments of his love in the world. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer that on this second Sunday of Advent, we embrace the message of peace, for peace in our world, communities, 
homes, and hearts, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who suffer from the burden of sin, that they may find their way to receive the sacrament of reconciliation and be unafraid of the beauty of truth, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who are homeless and others who have insufficient protection from the cold, that they may be kept safe as the winter weather settles in, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our parish family who are grieving the loss of a loved one during the holiday season, may they take comfort in this season of Advent as we prepare for our Lord's coming, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick and suffering of our parish community and families, we pray especially for Roger Bouchain, Chuck Moorhead, Elise Torbenson, Linda Sorby, sister of Ross Desitel, and for those on our prayer chain, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, especially Amanda Cassette, daughter of Steve and Teresa Cassette, Catherine Trainer, and Betty Sheely, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God of mercy and compassion, we offer you our prayers in faith. We ask that you grant them according to your most holy and perfect will through Christ our Lord. Amen. says our God. Comfort those who sit in darkness, mourning neath their sorrows low. Speak unto Jerusalem of the peace that waits for them. Tell of all the sins I cover And that warfare now is over Hark the voice of one who's crying In the desert far and near Biding all to full repentance Since the kingdom now is here Oh, that warning cry obey Now prepare for God away Let all valleys rise to meet him and the hills bow down to greet him. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Father Almighty. Amen. For the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all his holy church. Be pleased, O Lord, with our humble prayers and offerings, and since we have no merits to plead our cause, come, we pray, to our rescue with the protection of your mercy through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Amen. Let's give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For he assumed at his first coming the lowliness of human flesh, and so fulfilled the designs you formed long ago, and opened for us the way to eternal salvation, that when he comes again in glory and majesty, and all is at last made manifest, we who watch for that day may inherit the great promise in which we now dare to hope. 
and so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without ends we acclaim, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and John Fold, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you, through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. 
O oh Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter into my roof, but only say the word in my soul. Darkness hangs, the world is aching, yearning for the coming light. In his rising hope awaking, love has come to steal the night. In our hearts, true east, we're facing Toward the coming of our Lord, morning rising, gloom now fleeing, Christ returned, his word is true. As we wait with hope for rescue, love descends and all is well. Prophets tell your God is with us, heaven's gift, Emmanuel. He is here but hid as lowly in the poor and mystery where the bread and wine are offered he is here our God and King parting clouds reveal his wonder Mighty King in victory, trembling earth and rolling thunder, 
blazing sun and quaking sea. Now he comes, our King, in glory. Saints rejoice and darkness flees. Rising rays of light his chariot. Christ the Lord has made us free. On us now the sun is shining, lifting us to his embrace. Shame is cursed, no more confounding. Lift your head and know his face. Love incarnate, breath indwelling, now when truth is truth made known. We are his and he forever is our God and he alone.
Let us pray. Replenished by the food of spiritual nourishment, we humbly beseech you, O Lord, that through our partaking in this mystery, you may teach us to judge wisely the things of earth and to hold firm to the things of heaven. Through Christ our Lord. We have a few announcements this morning. Hey kids, listen up. Today is the feast of St. Nicholas. He was a real-life bishop who was, generous, who was a generous gift giver. To honor him and to celebrate St. Nicholas, we will, uh, <laughs> to honor him and to celebrate, St. Nicholas himself will be stopping in the St. Francis Gathering Place after Mass to give you each a small treat. Liturgical ministers, please sign up in the sacristy to help with the upcoming Feast of the Immaculate Conception Holy Day on Tuesday. Please check the bulletin for Mass times. And last but not least, don't forget to purchase your Christmas tree from our Knights of Columbus in the North parking lot. Let's support them and the good works they do in our parish. All trees are only $50. And before we introduce St. Nicholas, did I mention we have a parish penance service here? When is it? Tomorrow? No, the next Monday, not tomorrow, the next week. And for those of you who don't know, we actually have confessions here twice a day. So if you're up early in the morning at 6.30 and you're thinking, huh, I'm up early, I don't know what to do with myself, there'll be a priest in the confessional. Same thing in the afternoon. Maybe you're coming home from work or school and you're thinking, I think I'm checking in and spend some time with Jesus. At 4.45 till 5.10, there's always a priest in the confessional. Now, the moment we've all been waiting for since it is December 6th and it's actually the feast day of St. Nicholas. St. Nicholas, welcome. How are you? St. Nicholas, we all want to know why you wear a red uh, cope. Why do you wear red? What does that signify? Nicholas, Nicholas was a martyr. He was killed at the end of his life for the faith. Okay, so he died a martyr's death. He died for his faith. Yes. Is it true that you were at the Council of Nicaea? In 325, yes. Oh my gosh. And Are you... I was the guy that punched out the Arian and Arianism yes. guy. We heard Sorry. you were... We lost heard... control. That's okay. Good job. Sometimes it's worth fighting for your faith. There you go. I don't mind a little physical Christianity and sometimes handing out knuckle sandwiches. That's all right. <laughs> so we can uh, spend a couple minutes with you afterwards, maybe? Yes, afterwards. Very good. And St. Well, Nicholas bought a treat for everyone also. Thank you. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Do the sending, St. Nick. The Mass is ended. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. St. Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And, and do thou, O Prince, Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. And I just remembered, if it's December 6th and we're celebrating St. Nicholas, what do we celebrate on December 8th? Immaculate Conception. So we have a holy day on Tuesday, so please join us if you're able to. It is not a holy day of obligation since... Sunday Mass is no longer an obligation, but please do join us if you can. If you're wondering again what's Immaculate Conception, you can go to our St. Anthony's web page and go to um, After the Mass. It's one of the questions that I answered just this last week. And if you have any more questions of After the Mass, you can be sure to see April and she'll record you. So then you can be on the video too, right? And she's pointing at the camera. And she's giving me a message, but I don't know what it is. And on Tuesday, the Mass will be live streamed at 12.10. So we'll have the 6.45 a.m. Mass, 12.10 is live streamed. And then we have an evening Mass at, at 6 p.m. Thank you all. God bless you.